Hello there, welcome, welcome to another build video of Jeddah Workshop. Today we are building the Shaw Trooper helmet. My name is Ash and I hope you enjoy the process. So, this was um, quite a different helmet in that I built it completely from scratch, specifically for uh, a person who got in touch with me on Etsy and his name was Buddy, he sent me a message, it was really sweet, saying, hey, I'm, I'm 15, I love your helmets, but I can't afford them, I only have like $80 or something, and at the time I was charging, you know, £250 for a finished helmet, which is, you know, considerably more than $80 because of all the work involved. Um, but I put a shout out on Instagram, and this just shows the beauty of the Star Wars community. Um, I basically just told the story and says, you know, can does anyone want to help him out? Can we help him out here? I'd really like to make him a helmet. He sounds legit. And um, the whole community came together and just chipped in, you know, $5 here, $10 here. Some people put 20 quid in. Um, people who aren't even Star Wars fans or, you know, are just friends of me or friends of my family or just really supported this cause and put all the money in basically for me to um, you know pay my designer get the design done the materials print it get all the materials to actually build it and cover my costs basically I, I did it for free I built it for free for this guy buddy um, in the end unfortunately buddy just completely went off the radar and I did have this slight suspicion of, or the, just a question in my mind, going, is he really a 15 year old kid or is he just a guy trying to get a cheap Star Wars helmet? And in the end, he just stopped replying to my messages. So I think he was actually A, embarrassed <laughs> that I said yes and all of these people who he'd never met chipped in to making this helmet and he probably felt guilty, I don't know. We, we, we will never know the mystery of Buddy. I wish he was a real person, but he just went a bit weird in the end. Um, so what I did, um, because you know this put me in a difficult position. I got, I didn't expect all these people to come together and make this helmet. Um, and so once I'd finished it, it was like, well, what do I do with it? I can't keep it. Let's do I auction it for charity? Anyway, um, I ran a, a competition for it once it was finished. Um, where 100% of the proceeds went to the Candlelighters Foundation, which is a children's cancer charity uh, recommended by one of one of my followers, Captain Jack. Um, and someone won it, and it, it, he was an ambulance driver, and it, it all came good in the end, is what I'm saying. So, <laughs> after that little story, this is the how I made the actual helmet. So when you get your 3D printed parts, they will be in three sections. And the reason for this is um, if, you're, if you're new to 3D printing, you'll probably start off with a smaller printer bed. And it, that, this means, uh, you know, a full size one to one scale helmet probably won't fit in your bed. So you have to cut the model up and print them separately. I still do this anyway, even though I can probably fit this helmet on the, my, I have larger printer beds. Um, but it prevents print failure because there's nothing worse than, you know, spending two, two and a half days printing an entire helmet and then it gets right to the end and something goes wrong. You know, you run out of filament or uh, your nozzle gets blocked and you have to start completely again and the whole helmet is ruined. Whereas if you just print it in parts, you just have to print that part again. So it's just to minimize risk. Um, so I'm just prepping the pieces here, as you can see. In the uh, the short tube has these two little vents at the bottom at the back there and it's just got some support material kind of stuck in there um, obviously we're dealing with plastic um, nine times out of ten the prints come off perfect that one time out of ten um, support material which we use to actually um, support the model as it prints um, obviously if you have a flat area like an overhang um, you can't print in midair, you have to print onto something. So what the printer will do is print support material up to that point to be able to print on top of it to print the overhang and then you remove that support material and throw it away, it's waste material. Sometimes it can just melt to the model which is really annoying and you just pick it out so that's what I'm doing here. So 
Don't surprise if you have a bit of support material stuck to your print or raft material at the bottom. Um, that's like a thin, you know, 0.5 millimeter thin piece of plastic, which just again keeps the print model stuck to the bed. So you might just do have to do a little bit of prep work on your model before you start. And the more prep you do, the better it's going to be and the easier you're going to make um, life for yourself. Okay, so all I'm doing here is sanding the edges um, where I'm going to actually join the, the parts together. Um, one, because it's, uh, it just makes, it gives a nice key for the glue to actually adhere to. But also it just helps with the seam lines, um, you know, just to smooth them out a bit because once once we join these three parts together, you're gonna have three seam lines, you know? Two on the sides and one uh, of the dome of the helmet, and you're gonna have to fill those in. So just the closer together you can get them, the easier it is, basically. So I just sand all the edges with a 60 grit um, sandpaper just before gluing. And then uh, grab your super glue and do you do a dab sort of every centimeter or so. Um, I use Gorilla Glue, it's really good, strong super glue. You know, you don't need to go crazy with it because super glue expands to about three times its size. So you just do little dabs and then you want to line your pieces up together. This is the important part because if they're out of, you know, out of alignment that you just, it's going to be harder later on to try and get rid of those seam lines or the bumps or whatever. So just spend a little bit of time getting them perfectly aligned here. And then what you want to do is grab some bulldog clips and uh, just clip the the one side of it just to help keep it all together. And you want to have a, a soldering iron on hand. Um, turn it on. Make sure it's nice and hot for when you're ready for it. Um, don't use you know your favourite soldering iron because it's, it is going to get ruined. Just have one purely for this. But basically you want to go along the seam lines on the inside and the outside with your soldering iron really quickly. Um, just slide down it and what that does is it melts the two parts of the plastic together and sort of welds them um, and what this does is it just holds the model together as the glue sets so that you don't have to you know sit there holding it in perfect alignment for 24 hours basically um, it just helps keep keep it all together and it's a nice little hack do exactly the same with the dome of the helmet make sure it's sanded dab of super glue every centimeter line it up perfectly. Um, I use the, uh, you see there's sort of um, two protruding bits on the sides. I, I use them to line it up and get it nice and central because that's what's going to be looking weird if you get it wrong. And uh, again just go around it with a soldering iron on the outside and the inside as best you can. It's, it's a little bit hard to get the right angle on the inside but um, just, just do your best. Um, and you can see the helmet starting to take shape now. This is this is quite exciting. It's like building Lego or something. <laughs> you're not sure if it's gonna work, but once you get there, you go, oh, it's pretty damn good. Okay, you have a choice here now on how to fill it. If you'll notice, um, just the way with 3D, uh, the way 3D printers work, they build it up in layers, so you have these tiny little printer lines, which you need to fill in and make smooth. And you can do that in a number of ways. You can use car body filler. Um, you can use the UV resin me method, as I'm doing here. Obviously, this is a different helmet. Um, but that just <clears throat> that just requires uh, some th UV 3D printer resin and a small 405 nm UV light to cure it, and you just put it on with sponge. You'll have seen me do this before. Uh, sponge it on, and then cure it with your light. It takes about five or ten seconds, and build it up in thin layers. I do about three or four layers on a helmet, uh, and then. It's ready to sand basically, you wash it off with isopropyl alcohol, alcohol so it's not greasy and you're good to go. The other method is using a filling agent, so uh, a lot of people use Bondo in the US, Bondo Spot and Glazing Putty, um, that's hard to get in the UK so I use a product called Lechler Spatter Rapid 1K Stopper, basically this is what um, you know um, people who work on car bodies use you know panel beaters um it's for pinholes filling in pinholes you can't go over a depth of three millimeters um so again you do have to build it up in layers um it comes out it's in a tube it comes out with the consistency of two of toothpaste 1k means it's a one part product you don't have to do any mixing so that's really cool and you just go around the whole helmet 
um, filling in the printer lines with, with a nice layer of this stuff, you let that dry for about eight hours and then and then you start sanding it off. Um, and if you've got if you've still got holes, you put some more product on and build it up, let it dry. This is a much slower process, so it's entirely up to you. Obviously, when like I do this for a living, so when I'm building helmets, um, I want to just do things as quickly and efficiently as possible. But I started off just doing every helmet with with this stuff. Um, it takes longer, but it's a nice meditative process, you know. I, I stick some headphones on, or listen to a podcast or a video, and just get going. Um, you know, this is all part of building your helmet, is the, the slowing down of life. Either method, you know, once the, uh, the Bondo is all dried, or your UV resin is all cured and washed off with isopropyl, and when I say washed off, I mean just wipe it off with a cloth. Um, you're ready to sand. Now I start with, um, if you've used UV resin, start with a 60 grit. Um, if you've used the Bondo or the, the Lechler, start with a 120 grit and you sand the helmet all over completely, every, every single part of it. And then you go down to 240 grit, sand the whole helmet again. And then you go down to 400 grit and sand the whole helmet again. Um, I know if you've never done this before, you're like, why don't I just start with 400? You can't, it's not, it's too fine. You need to do it down in layers. Um, so you start with a coarser sandpaper just to get rid of the, you know, the high bits. Sanding is all about peaks and troughs. So you want to sand everything down to the same level and you'll start to get a feel of it the more you do it and you get better at it and faster at it. But basically, if you sand the whole helmet down and then you still have areas that have dips, you want to fill those in, again, with either method, UV, UV resin or the Lechler or Bondo, whatever you're using. Let that dry and sand it down again in the same um, order of sandpaper, 120, 240, 400. Um, and with each pass that you do with this, your helmet is going to get more and more smooth and more and more um, overall uh, uniform that's the word I was looking for and you can see I've done this here I've already sanded it down um, all over and then I've, um, in between that I will spray um, a, like a layer of spray putty or high bolt primer that just helps to fill in the even smaller lines you let that dry um, and it's because it's all one one color you're able to see the imperfections better of you know all the holes and dips that you need to fill in again so you can see i've already done that here i've gone over it with the uh, the lechler again let that dry and i'm sanding it smooth it's basically entirely up to you you know how far you go with this i like my helmets as smooth and perfect as possible even if i'm going to weather them and battle damage them because you know if i'm if there's going to be dents and scratches in it i want to sort of put them there and be in control of that um but trust me it takes it takes a bit of time but each new pass you do um you just know that you're getting it more and more perfect okay so this is about the time that i bought myself a nice um, air compressor this is you know what people would use to spray a car it's a much smaller one it's you know it's a prosumer one but um heavy duty compared to um a regular airbrush compressor and what I'm using this P88 stuff is basically a, a 2k high bold primer now you'll probably be if you've done this before you'll be used to using a high bold primer out of a can um, and it's great and it's the same as spray putty you know it's just it's the it's it's a solution which fills in the gaps the smaller gaps that are less than three millimeter deep that you've been using the Bondo or the UV resin for. It's just to give a nice overall layer of uh, smoothness. But obviously if you buy it in a big chunky paint can like this, it's much, much uh, more cost effective for me. So I'm just pouring that into my air gun now. Uh, actually, I think this first one was a, uh, a 1K solution. So I'm probably just gonna mix it with a bit of uh, paint thinners and um, don't be if, if you're watching this video and going oh my gosh like I need an air compressor and all this like specialist paint stuff no 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 I've been building my way up to this I started with everything out of a can 
um, and basically my friend's dad is a panel beater and I went and asked his advice on, on products that he uses and you know how to speed things up and he was like get, get an air compressor. Obviously this just makes my life much much easier but you can do it from home just with products from Amazon. So basically, once you're happy with the overall smoothness of your helmet and whatever product you've used, whether it's UV resin or Bondo, um, and then you wanna finish it off with a layer of high bulb primer or spray putty. And this is all I'm doing here. I'm just doing it out of an air compressor. Um, go around it really methodically. Make sure you get every single surface. I, I personally find when I'm spraying, I do all the same um, orientation surfaces at the same time so if I turn the helmet upside, do, uh, upside down I do all the flat bits but on every area of the helmet all the way around then I turn it around and I do all the the flat surfaces pointing towards me from the opposite angle and then I finally go around and do uh, you know the overall large expanse of the helmet but just yeah do it really really methodically and you can see that this is gonna even out everything. And it's also, if you do have any more imperfections, it's gonna show them up, but hopefully you don't have too many at this point. And of course, don't forget the all important head shield. Um, I would consider this, the, you know, the accessories. And the reason I build my models where everything is separate um, is just because it's easier to build that way. Obviously, if this thing was stuck to the front of the helmet, a, it would use a way more material in printing it because I'd have to build supports up to that area and then they're just going to be thrown away. And, you know, being able to just maneuver this small thing around by hand when you're sanding it getting smooth is so much easier. Plus, with, with other models, if they are different colors, this is not in this case, but if, if, say, this head shield was, you know, black and the rest of the helmet was sand color, um, having it separate means once it's smoothed I can paint it separately as well I don't have to mask anything off on the helmet um, I think it's you know it all just adds to the the efficiency of the process is having parts separate so here he is all um, nice and uniform smooth I'm just going around any little edges that I can see um, just to you know because I'm OCD <laughs> I told you it would show some imperfections um, and yeah, if you want to get it even smoother, go for it. And you can see I'm using a little pick tool here just to get into those kind of awkward areas that might just have a bit of, um, you know, dust that's settled in there and been sprayed over or just, just any little annoying bits. You can just scrape them out at this point. Okay, eventually you will have a nice smooth helmet that you're happy with and uh, once you've got that, you're ready for painting. So grab yourself some uh, bog standard grey primer. And again, just make sure you go around it methodically, get all the surfaces. You, you can see my OCD-ness here, I do all the bottom bits, then I turn around and do all the top bits, and then finally I go around and do the whole helmet. This also helps with um, not getting any overspray, which would give you sort of a textured paint. If you want that, you can use that as a technique. Um, but yeah, just go around it, you can see how beautiful and smooth it is here. And then do exactly the same with your base color once the primer is dried it only takes about 20 minutes grab your uh, sandy sandy colored yellow i spent a good deal of time trying to find the right shade of this um and i also i i went with something a tiny bit brighter and a tiny bit more yellowy because i knew i was going to weather it and dull it down anyway and i kind of predicted that once i do that it will give me the right shade of sand color um, what I'm doing here is just stenciling for the black bits. So uh, the Shaw Trooper has um, these black grills at the back and the black bands um, on the front and, and the bottom vents there. And I've masked off everywhere else on this tiny little keyhole in the ear. Um, yeah, so I've basically masked off absolutely every of the area only oh, he, he also people miss this he has a black um, rim on the bottom as well and in the uh, visor area I really went to town in trying to get the accuracy because I kept seeing people doing different paint jobs and I was like well which which one is it so I just referred to uh, the movie in the end you know go to the source rogue one and um, these are all the 
black areas that I identified, so really important if you want to get it accurate. He also, of course, has a black rim on his um, on his blast shield, the head shield. So the the stenciling um, and the masking off takes a bit of prep time, but once you're ready to paint, it is so satisfying knowing that all you have to do is spray the paint. You know that's like the easiest part. So make sure you do your prep work and uh, get all your tape nice, nice and flat and laid down, so you're not going to get any spills or runs. Um, and it's super, super satisfying. And uh, once he's dry, uh, leave it overnight at least. Um, peel all your stencils off, and then you're ready to glue in all your accessories. You know, the front grill, uh, the two front vents on the bottom of the helmet, the rebreather on the front, and your head shield. For the visor, I used a replacement grinder shield. I now sell these on my website as an option with every single helmet. They're really cool because they're flexible and you can cut them with scissors and you just um, cut them to size, draw a little template and stick them in and I use a milliput to keep them into place. You can weather them if you want using the dry brush method. Um, I went around all the edges with a chrome paint pen as well just to give a bit of, um, bit of highlight to it. I also um, I weathered this with um, a little bit of real sand and all I did is just use a bit of PVA glue in certain areas and then sprinkle some real sand on it, I thought it would be a nice little touch. And yeah, job done. Doesn't sound so bad to me.